what is chemotherapy? Chemotherapy is medicine that kills fast-growing cells. Cancer cells are fast-growing, but so are good cells made in the body, such as cells in the bone marrow, white blood cells that fight infection, red blood cells that carry oxygen, platelets that clot blood. Fast-growing cells also are found in your mouth, your GI tract, and hair follicles. There's a risk of infection while on chemotherapy because of a decreased white blood cell count. Ways for you to prevent infection. Have a thermometer at home. Check your temperature if you are feeling unwell or if you have been instructed to do so. Wash your hands often. Before eating, after using the bathroom, after handling raw meat, after touching surfaces other people have touched. Staying away from people you know are sick. Avoiding large crowds. Using lotion to prevent cracks in the skin. Wearing protective gloves when gardening, working outside, or cleaning up after pets. Do not take medicine to reduce a fever without talking to your doctor first. Some regimens may include medicine to help support your white blood cell count during treatment. We want you to monitor for signs and symptoms of infection, such as a temperature of 100.5 degrees or higher. This is between 100 and 101 degrees, not 105. If you would have chills, coughing up, blowing out yellow or green mucus, if you have burning with urination, similar to a urinary tract infection, if you have any breaks in the skin that are red, draining, painful, not healing, diarrhea, constipation issues, we ask that you call the office to report any concerns with infection promptly. We want to avoid treatment delays. We do not want you to end up in the hospital. And rarely patients can die from infection while on chemotherapy. Our phone is answered 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Local 319-363-8303. Toll free is 1-888-400-6262. If the office is open, you will speak to our receptionist and then the doctor's nurse to report symptoms. If the office is closed, you will give your name and phone number to the answering service. The doctor on call gets paged and you get a call back. Chemotherapy can also cause anemia. This is when the number of red blood cells are reduced. Red blood cells carry oxygen to all parts of the body. This can cause shortness of breath, fatigue, difficulty performing daily activities. Typically, anemia needs to be monitored and no intervention is required. Call the office if you are unable to get out of bed and do your activities of daily living. Chemotherapy can also cause fatigue in and of itself. Listen to your body. Be active as tolerated. Rest when needed. Space out activities. Exercise can help, such as simple stretching or walking. This is not a time to start an intense exercise regimen. Getting enough sleep is important. Nap if you need to. Try to stick to a sleep-wake routine. Managing side effects from treatment can help. So call if there are side effects that are not controlled. Good nutrition is important. Eating a well-balanced diet with high protein foods. Asking family friends to help with tasks. Emotional factors can also contribute to fatigue. We have a social worker available in the clinic. We can also refer to a psychologist or psychiatrist. Chemotherapy can also decrease platelets. Platelets are part of the blood cell that clot blood. We would want you to call if there is bleeding of your nose, gums, or blood with a bowel movement. Call if you have increased bruising. 
Using a soft toothbrush is helpful. Using an electric razor can be helpful. Change position slowly to avoid falls. Do not climb ladders due to risk of increased injury when falling. Do not take aspirin unless ordered by the doctor or your doctor knows. Chemotherapy can also cause nausea and vomiting. The severity of nausea vomiting depends on the regimen. Premedications for nausea will be given depending on the regimen. Sometimes there are scheduled nausea medicines we ask you to take after chemotherapy. There are also as needed medicines for nausea for you to take if needed after chemotherapy. Small frequent meals can be helpful to avoid getting overly hungry. Avoiding large meals can help. Eating bland foods, avoiding sweet, fatty, or fried foods. Sometimes eating room temperature foods help if the odor bothers. Ginger tea, ginger ale, ginger candy can help with nausea. Please call our office if symptoms are not controlled. Specific information on the nausea regimen for your chemotherapy plan will be discussed further in person. Mouth sores. Chemotherapy can cause mouth sores, like canker sores. If this occurs, avoid acidic, spicy, salty foods. Avoid smoking and alcohol. Consider eating soft foods. Things that can help, topical agents such as Origel. Using warm salt water rinses. Using over-the-counter mouthwash called Biotin. If there are difficulties with eating or drinking due to mouth sores, please contact the office. Dry mouth. It's important to stay hydrated. Sip water frequently. Stimulate saliva with sour candies or lemon candies. Avoid alcohol-containing mouthwash. Consider biotin products including mouthwash and dry mouth spray. Keep lips moist with lip balm. Constipation. Stay hydrated with 64 ounces of water per day. Increase the amount of high fiber foods. Exercise is important. You may need bowel medications such as stool softeners, Senecot, Milk of Magnesia, Miralax. We want bowels moving at least every two days. If there are questions about constipation, please contact the office. Diarrhea. This includes loose or watery stools. Diarrhea can cause dehydration. If diarrhea occurs, it is important to push fluids, such as Gatorade, defizzed ginger ale, or 7-Up, and water. Change to a bland diet, such as the Brat diet, which includes bananas, applesauce, rice, toast. Change to a low-fiber diet. Avoid spicy, fatty, fried foods, dairy, fruit juices, caffeinated and alcoholic beverages during the time of diarrhea. You may need to take Imodium as the box directs. If diarrhea persists after four pills in 24 hours, please call the office to report. Chemotherapy can cause loss of appetite and taste changes. Consider small frequent meals. Consider carnation instant breakfast, boost, ensure. If food lacks flavor, marinade using salad dressing or strong seasonings. Cook and serve with plastic to reduce the metallic or bitter taste. If red meat tastes bitter, marinade in soy sauce or fruit juice before cooking. Substitute chicken, turkey, eggs, dairy, 
or fish that does not have a strong smell. Change the temperature of food, serving at room temperature, freezing or chilling as appropriate. Home safety precautions. Use effective birth control throughout treatment as chemotherapy can cause fetal harm. Safety for the family. Hugging and kissing is safe. You cannot give others cancer. You can be around pregnant women. If possible, they should not clean up bodily fluids after treatment. You can share a bathroom. If bodily fluids splash on the toilet, wear gloves and clean with soap and water before others use it. Hair loss. This can range from no effect to thinning to complete hair loss. Scalp hair is most frequently lost, but this can include body-wide hair loss. This usually starts two to four weeks after treatment. Consider hats, scarves, wigs. Our social worker has a list of places to get wigs. Hair will grow back after treatment is completed around three to six months. Hair may come back a different color. It may be curly and previously was straight or vice versa. Skin changes. Chemotherapy increases your sensitivity to the sun. Use sunscreen, hats, shade, long sleeve clothing. Chemotherapy can dry out your skin. Lubricate your skin with emollients to prevent cracks in the skin. Avoid scented, perfumed, lotion, soaps as they may irritate. Stay hydrated with 64 ounces of water per day. If you develop a rash, please call to report one that is itching or spreading. Nail changes. Some chemotherapy regimens affect the nails. Nails can darken, ridge, thin, or even the nail can lift away from the nail bed. Avoid artificial nails due to risk of infection. Avoid cutting cuticles. Keep nails short. Call with concerns of infection. If you would like to get a manicure or pedicure, please discuss this with your physician. Joint aches, muscle aches. Some chemotherapy regimens cause pain in the joints and muscles. This usually lasts less than a week. Things that help, warm bath, hot or cold compress, relaxation activities. Unless contraindicated, you could try ibuprofen 400 milligrams with food two to three times a day. Call the office if pain is not controlled. Peripheral neuropathy. Some chemotherapy regimens affect the nerves. This can cause numbness, tingling, burning of the hands and feet. This develops gradually over time. It involves fingertips and or toes both sides, comes and goes, then stays, then starts moving up from the fingers and toes to the hands and feet. This can be painful and impact your ability to use zippers, buttons, or pick things up. Report symptoms at follow-up appointments so further chemotherapy dosing can be safely done. Keeping your hands and feet warm helps, also avoiding extreme temperatures. If you have questions about chemotherapy or side effects, please call our office. We have a local phone number as well as a toll-free phone number. You may also write down your questions and bring them to your next appointment. If you are having problems while on chemotherapy, please call our office to report. Welcome to Nutrition During Cancer Treatment. In this brief video, we will discuss the importance of good nutrition during cancer treatment, how to implement a well-balanced diet, food safety, and the nutrition services available to you here at Halperine Cancer Center. There are many benefits to good nutrition during cancer treatment, as both the cancer and treatment can change the way that you eat. While your specific nutrient needs may differ, Eating well during treatment may help you feel better, keep up your strength and energy, maintain your weight and body's store of nutrients, have a better tolerance for treatment-related side effects, 
lower your risk of infection, and help you heal and recover faster. When we talk about a well-balanced diet, what do we mean? Aim to eat five servings of fruits and vegetables every day. Try to eat a variety of colors as there are health benefits to eating more than just green vegetables. Choose leaner cuts of meat or try incorporating plant-based options such as beans and soy-based foods. Trans fats are found in processed foods and fast food items. Try to avoid these as much as possible. Instead, choose foods that have unsaturated fats, such as fish, avocado, and nuts. Focus on whole grains, such as whole wheat products, brown rice, and oats. Foods high in added sugar and salt are okay to consume in moderation, but should be limited. Having a small snack between meals is a great way to make sure that you are eating enough calories and could help give you a morning or afternoon energy boost. Why do we focus on high-protein foods? Protein has many essential functions in the body, including repairing tissues and keeping your immune system healthy. If you aren't eating enough protein, your body might start to break down muscle, which makes recovering from illness take longer. After chemotherapy, extra protein is needed to help heal tissues. Good sources of protein are eggs, low-fat dairy products, fish, poultry, lean red meat, nuts and nut butters, beans, peas, and lentils. All cells in our body need water to function. Not drinking enough water or losing extra fluids through vomiting or diarrhea can result in dehydration. We can get water from the foods we eat, but it is still important to drink about eight eight ounce cups of water daily, unless instructed otherwise by your doctor. A simple way to remind yourself to drink more water is to always have a bottle of water with you. Some people don't like the taste of water. Try adding fruit or herbs to your water to give it a different flavor. As you recently learned, there is an increased risk of infection while on chemotherapy due to decreased white blood cells. This means making sure the food that you are eating is safe is very important. Remember to wash your hands before and after preparing and eating foods. Saw meat, fish, and poultry on the bottom shelf of your refrigerator to prevent bacterial growth and cross-contamination with non-meat foods. Rinse all fruits and vegetables before eating them. Before cooking with eggs, make sure the shells are not cracked. If the shell is cracked, throw it away. If any foods smell or look strange, do not eat them. Planning how you can cope with possible side effects of treatment can help you feel more in control and ready for the changes that may come. Ideas for planning ahead include stocking up your favorite foods that you can keep in the pantry or freezer so you won't have to shop as often. Cook meals in advance and freeze pre-portioned meals to reheat after a long day. Talk with your family members and friends about ways that they can help by taking over the grocery shopping or cooking. There is a registered dietitian on staff at the Hall Perrine Cancer Center. Sarah can help with a variety of nutrition impacting symptoms, such as nausea or vomiting, fatigue, loss of appetite, weight loss, or loss of taste. If you have questions or concerns about cooking or meal prep, your weight, supplements, such as Ensure, or any other nutrition-related topics, please ask your nurse or physician to speak with a dietitian. You can directly reach Sarah at 319-398-6960.